What's that? Yeah, that's that's no, we're talking about radar. Oh. Well, what do you think about the, I mean, these scanners? Would you, would you consider that a, a major it, it depends on the context. Like, okay, you go to an airport, you expect that you're going to be searched, all right, in some way. So, right, it's, so it's constitutionally treated like a criminal just to get on a plane until you're proven innocent by a scan. Because constitutionally, we're supposed to be treated innocent until proven guilty, right? So now, it's, if I'm walking down the street and you've got a scanner mounted to the back of your patrol car and you're scanning everybody, you're treating everybody on that street as guilty until you prove them innocent by scanning them. See what I'm saying? Okay. That's how that works constitutionally. Well, constitutionally, with using my example, you go to an airport, it is in a, um, it's in the best interest of public safety for... Yeah, but yeah. you can't trump the Bill of Rights just because it's in the... You say it's in the best interest. I mean, you know, if no, you... There's a compelling public interest, though. Yeah, and, to, and, to and, what? And, and not allowing people to go on a plane with a bomb. Okay, well... The, so I'm saying it depends on the context. Well, the, fan, I, the way the founders said it was that if you trade essential liberty for temporary, temporary security, then you don't deserve either one. Benjamin Franklin. Right. But, so, so the idea is, look, you can... It's a fallacy to think you're ever going to stop terrorism, right? So to give up, the, to be treated like... And it's not just a matter of getting scanned on the street. It's a matter of changing the whole way society is to from innocent to proven guilty to now it's guilty to proven innocent. You're, you're guilty until you can prove, it. until I empty my pockets when you frisk me, until I get scanned, until whatever, whatever it is, whatever the security measure is, that's proving me innocent. So there's no probable cause, there's no reasonable suspicion if you're just scanning people driving down the street. I said, it comes from, you know, I wouldn't support just like doing that everybody, but... Okay, and well, I, I that's good. Know, and we all know, this is only going to be done in certain neighborhoes throughout New York City. It's not it's not going to be well, done I, in every I, neighborhood. I, I think it'll be I done in every borough, but I, yeah, I every definitely, borough, but definitely select it. I would expect it to be done where there is more, say, gun violence. So let me ask Does that make sense? Let me ask you this question. You've got white neighborhoods where kids are, you know, teenagers, whatever, or even adults are smoking as much weed as they are in black neighborhoods. But yet there's only enforcement in black neighborhoods. So then the statistics say, well, this is a high crime area because we pick up X amount of pot dealers. Uh, or X amount of people with guns, yet you never check the white neighborhoods because there's no stop and frisk going on. So the, the, the statistics... True enough. All right. Well, well, hey, look, I appreciate that you're reasonable. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that at least that you said that you don't want to just scan anybody, you know, squad on the street with no problem. I believe, I, I believe in a Constitution Bill of Rights as much as anybody. Good, good. And, you know, I also don't want the uh, government to... Uh, have have soldiers in my in my house. Yeah. Oh well, it may, is that going to be yeah, next? I've done that for quite a while. Is that going to be next? Danny Panzella here, and we're at the protest of the NYPD naked body scanners. Uh, we wanted to just send a message to the NYPD that we're not going to tolerate being scanned uh, without warrants, without probable cause on the streets of New York City. Uh, so for, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the NYPD right now is testing uh, scanners, the same naked body scanners that are being used in the airports and they're planning to mount them to the back of police cars and possibly set up checkpoints on, on the streets. Uh, they're going to drive up and down the blocks and just scan uh, pedestrians as they walk up and down New York City streets. And if they see something on the scan that resembles a weapon or some kind of contraband, uh, then they're going to stop and frisk people. So there's, there's several issues with this. One is a blatant violation of the Bill of Rights. There's uh, no probable cause to be scanning people. It's an invasion of privacy. So, and what, what's going to end up happening is there's, Ray Kelly is saying this is going to stop stop and frisk or, or minimize stop and frisk. But what's going to end up happening is if I have a pen in my pocket, they're going to say, oh, it looked like a syringe on the scanner, so that gave me justification to stop and frisk them. This will give 
the NYPD a legal, uh, basically a straw man, to to say, well, everybody looks it all it something small, whatever it is, it looks like a weapon. So that was my justification. It was a good stop, even though they were innocent, even though they didn't have anything. Um, I was permitted to stop them because I had reasonable suspicion they were carrying a weapon because of what the image on the scanner showed me. So um, that's the first concern, the, the Bill of Rights and invasion of privacy. The second concern is a health issue. Uh, many uh, academic, science academics have been warning us that these scanners are not safe. The NYPD claims that these are passive scanners that they don't actually emit radiation, they only read radiation. Uh, I am currently researching that from the manufacturer to find out if that is in fact true, uh, or if that is just media spin to get uh, health conscious New Yorkers to accept uh, this new technology. Um, either way, I think uh, it's important for all New Yorkers to stand up against the NYPD for, for trying to take this really dictatorial powers. I mean, we're really talking some, some real you know, 1984 uh, type security techniques here, if you want to call it security, where, uh, you know, the stop and frisk figures already are 96% of the people that the NYPD stop and frisk are innocent. They're, they find nothing on them. So the question is either the NYPD are not being trained properly on what probable cause and what reasonable suspicion is. So their, their margin of error is so horrific that it's 90, 94%. Uh, or they're not even bothering to check for reasonable suspicion or probable cause, they're just stopping anyone they feel like stopping. Um, and obviously I would, I would tend to think that that's actually the case. I don't think the whole uh, NYPD could really be that inept at, you know, looking for suspicious activity. Uh, and you know, the, the NYPD's own numbers say that stop and frisk does not yield um, weapons, and even Ray Kelly admitted on Face the Nation that most of the weapons that they do catch uh, with stop and frisk are actually legally owned guns that are from out of state. So an out of towner will come into New York City with their legally owned uh, permitted weapon, uh, but it's technically not, you're, they're not permitted to carry it in New York City. Uh, so the, that's the majority of conf confiscations that the NYPD makes via stop and frisk. Um, so there's really no justifiable cause to scan New York City citizens on the streets uh, for no reason, without even without their consent, certainly, and uh, in many cases without even their knowledge. Uh, so that's why we're out here on the street. We're just trying to send a message to the NYPD that we're not going to tolerate this continued erosion of our uh, civil liberties, even if it did make us safer. It's not worth it to lose our freedom. Uh, if you want more information about this story and to be keep updated, you can check out truthsquad.tv where I am continually posting articles on this subject. Thank you.